Hey guys, Gameboy3800 here once again for another laptop review. Today we're looking at the Dell Latitude E6410. This looks very similar to the um, Precision M4500 that I've done before, with the very minor fact that this one is almost completely identical. <laughs> That's just it, they're almost identical in every way. They can even both have a Quadro graphics card, which is interesting. So, as always with my laptop reviews, I like to go over the exterior first. So, let's do that. The top is a big single slab of aluminum that, um, as seen in the M, what was it, 6400? Um, it can get dented easily, so it's not very strong. It does look nice, though. On the left side, you see a missing hard drive cover. Above the missing hard drive cover is a card reader, for like a business card or whatever. Then thing, USB 2. I don't think any of these are USB 3. Well, beneath that you have a eShadow USB 2 combo, and then an old VGA, and then finally a Kensington lock. On the back you see an extended 9-cell battery, power in, display port out. On the other side you see LAN, and then a cover um, hiding the phone jack, because it's in there, but they don't want you to use it. They want you to get back into the time period. You have two more USBs, a wireless toggle switch, headphone microphone, a hot swap style DVD drive. Pop that out. This can be swapped in for either a extra battery or an extra hard drive bay. Firewire and then express card slot here. And then finally, on the front, you have an SD card slot. Opening it up, we have a 14.1 inch screen. It's not a good screen though. Um, it's old TN style panel, so not very good. The keyboard is actually pretty good. It's nice and soft and easy to type on. It's all proper size, even though it's not a very big laptop. And holding the function key, you get a full number pad. It, you even have a little nub here and clickers up here, as well as a touchpad and clickers down here. The center button up here is to use for scrolling with the center nub. I'm going to power it on now. It doesn't take too long to boot up thanks to a special hard drive I have in there. That's really cool. It's a Seagate SSHD hybrid drive. With a hybrid drive, it has both a 500 gigabyte 5400 RPM hard drive and a 8 gigabyte SSD. And the 8 gig SSD acts as a system cache and it automatically puts all the most used files in there, like booting up Windows, it has some files in there, and then all the most needed programs are all loaded up. So as soon as you're logged on, it's ready to go online, ready to game, ready to do whatever. And upcoming is the only issue I can find, really. You hear that? That was as loud as this can get. Yep, there's something wrong with my unit where the speakers don't um, work very well. And then the Wi-Fi actually picks up really good. It picks up to my Wi-Fi. Totally not a virus. 5 gigahertz actually. It, it can pick up to 500 or 5 gigahertz, but it only downloads at 300 or 400 megabytes.
per megabits per second. Which when downloading the test game on Steam, it got down to 5 megabytes per second. And even my desktop with its high-end Asus wireless card gets 7. So that's pretty good for this time. And you can see this thing going all crazy, and you can probably see on it too, that it's got a Intel Core i7 2.8 GHz processor. This is a M640 model, or 640M, whatever it is. And it's pretty good. It's a dual core, that's the only flaw I can see. But without, like, if it had a quad core, then you wouldn't be able to see anything because the, the dual cores have built-in graphics. And there lies, I guess, not the issue, but the design choice of this particular unit is that it has no dedicated card in it. It could have a Quadro NVS3100M with 1 gigabyte of memory, I believe, but instead it's got basic Intel HD graphics, which are, is pretty good for office work and YouTube and all that. You can also see this has a back of the keyboard just like the M4500 and M6400. Alright, the screen, 1200 by 800, nothing too special there. The sound is really bad on these speakers, but I found just plugging in a pair of headphones or external speakers fixes the issue. adapter. I just have a bigger 150 watt. It usually takes an, a 90 watt, but I don't have one I can like throw away, so there's a 150 watt. Brighter. And now refresh rate updated. The, the screen has two refresh rates, 40 hertz for battery, 60 hertz for power, which is good for saving power and then looking pretty when it's all charged up. The only thing we're going to see now is how well it does in game. We're going to see the frame rates up top. And there we go. I should also note that this does have a webcam, and we, we will look at that right after the game loads. Six hundred frames. Best game ever. Best graphics card ever. First generation Intel HD graphics. Ah, there we go. Okay. In case you can't tell, settings are toned way down. And on the lowest settings with no items in sight, we get just under 60. Playable? Maybe for now, but once we get into a level with actual things, like the base grid map, we will see that it doesn't do too good at all. Even with just a few things loaded in the distance, it's dropped by half. And then it looks really bad because I have it in like 640 by 400 resolution. And then every other setting off, like anti-aliasing off, smooth lighting off, smooth edges off, SSAO off, everything is off. But Hey. I guess it's not a very smashing performer. Now the webcam, right down here. Nope. I found it that it's not very good, not at all. Sure, you can take a picture in 2046 by 1536, or whatever the resolution is. 2048 by 1536.
but it's still not good. Same for recording. I guess it's okay for what it is, like Skype call, but you can see it's very laggy. So, um, I have one more thing to touch up upon, is that um, I tried to put in some more gaming oriented memory, 8 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz, but it wouldn't work, it wouldn't post. So that means the highest speed it can take is 1333 megahertz, which is 1066, like 10600 memory, whatever it is. And then I um, tried to get the frame rates better by adding some uh, Arctic Silver thermal paste. That didn't work either, as you just saw. And then, um, last thing I want to touch up upon is that this does not have the latitude on flash storage thing. And what that would have done is that would have allowed it to you to press the latitude on button instead of the power on button when booting up. And it would save all your stuff, so it'd beat up in 10, se 10 seconds instead of the 2 minutes you saw, or whatever. And that really confuses me why you would still have the latitude on button right next to the power button, but not have it installed inside. If you're not even going to have the feature, get rid of the button. Idiots. So yeah. Long story short. short Good business laptop for the time, I guess even today because you can give it a i7 um, 2.8 gigahertz. Gaming, no. But if you give it a better screen and get the Quadro edition, um, it might do eh, but that's about it for gaming. Office work, online, stuff like that, you saw it was doing pretty okay. So I guess that sums it up. Good laptop if you can find it for a good price. And this one I did find for a good price. Only $130 with the Core i7 3.46 GHz Max Turbo. So yep, I hope you found this review helpful. And feel free to leave a comment. Thanks Game Boy Out. See you next time.